So what I want to do real quick is just a very quick Nan the Tetris development environment setup in preparation for doing Nan the Tetris projects. This video is going to be geared towards Windows. It's going to be on Windows 11 for me. It'll work on Windows 10 and should work on any version just fine as far as I'm aware. If you're using something older and you have issues, just make a comment, let me know. I'll try and help you out. But this is going to be geared towards Windows 11 just because it's the most recent version. So, without further ado, let's take a look. Now, first things first, I already have a web browser pulled up and this will be a Git repository that I maintain for all the software I have for this course in general. I'll have it linked in the description below. It's just a quick collection of links, basically. So I have Nanda Tetris website linked, software that they have. Now, this is not a one-to-one -one with what you'll find on Nanda Tetris' actual website. I use a custom variant. I've made additional projects in here. I have a few other things attached to it. So there is a little bit of difference between what you have on Nanda Tetris' actual website, which is again linked here, and what I have in this Git repo. So if you're taking the course with me, you want these links. We'll take a look at them in a bit. Uh, Nanda Zip is, again, if you're taking the course with me, that'll be in a separate video. If you're just doing this for the fun of it, you don't have to worry about this. Don't worry about it. Now, what is important, regardless of what you're doing, is you need some Java runtime environment, some JDK, to actually run the Nanda Tetris software suite. The source code for everything is in Java. It is available on Nanda Tetris website. If you scour through the actual website, you can find it. It's in a pretty old version of Java, but even the most recent versions will run it just fine. I've had better experience using anything between 16 to 20, which is what it is at the time of this recording. I do update these links to the most recent version of OpenJDK. I'm using the Adoptium from Timberland. I think uh, Lips is the entity that maintains that. So I do maintain these links and update them regularly. Same thing with Python here. Python's not necessary for basic Nanda Tetris, but for some of the stuff that's in the custom variant I have, and if you're taking it with me Nanda Zip, you might need Python for it. So I maintain, again, the most recent versions, just link for the actual installers. And same thing here with VS Code. You don't need VS Code. I just use it as my default text editor because there's some extensions that I like to use. I'll show those off in a second. But this is what I use for my actual Nanda Tetris suite. It's just recent version of OpenJDK recent version of Python, and then a recent version of VS Code. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at how we start. So, before I download anything, I want to pull up a terminal, and, oops, the file a little bit larger. I'm going to run Java my sponsor. And it's going to say, hey, that's not recognized, doesn't exist, and it's because I don't have Java installed. I fix that. Same thing. Python. Python's not run, or Python's not found. It's going to say Microsoft Store. I'm not going to use the Microsoft Store variant. You can if you want to, as long as you have some fairly recent version of Python. Definitely needs to be Python 3. I think 3.8 and anything after is perfectly fine. Before that, um, here be Dragons. And then I don't have VS Code installed. I'm not going to bother with that one. But I need to install Java and Python for runtimes with the software that was actually developed for this development environment. So first things first, let's just do ahead the end. Yeah, this one. OpenJDK Windows. You can see on the MSI, that's gonna be my downloads folder. I'll go ahead and download Python as well. I'll do VS Code for Windows. I'll take a little bit. And then I want to get Nano Tetris again, the Windows variant. Once all these are installed, uh, I'm just gonna click over here. It's just gonna open up my downloads folder. You'll see I have OpenJDK, Python, VS Code, and this Nanda Tetris Windows zip. Now, if you have that terminal from earlier open right now, actually I can just, I'll, I'll do it just to make sure it's clear what's happening. So I'm just gonna keep it open right now. It's open before I install my software. 
first things first, I'm going to double click the OpenJDK, start that installer. Again, you see Adoptium. Just go ahead and click the next. None of these are particularly useful. It's pretty straightforward. Go ahead and finish that up. Now, Java's installed. I'm going to come over here to my terminal and do that command again. It says Java is not recognized as a command with function script. Still saying it's not installed. Very simply, I'm just going to close and restart this and run it again. And now I can find it. So that's just that session of that terminal. Couldn't find it because it was created before Java was installed. So if you see that, go ahead and close up the terminal, reopen it. You should be good to go. If it continues being that way, then sometimes, I think this usually happens a little bit older Windows 10 version, you might need to just log out of your account or your, or your entire like Windows session, log back in. And if that doesn't work, maybe a restart. If it continues not working, then something is going wrong. But generally, it's just double click that, click with the installer, check if it's installed, should be fine. If that prompt shows up for like OpenJDK 20 version, uh, then you should be good. Same thing Python. Now this one. This one. To actually do that check, and just generally, you want to add python.ec to the path. If this is just what you're doing for the actual runtime, this is fine. I'm not going to get into the roots of going into different Python environments, stuff like that. That is more complex Python development stuff. This, we just want a functioning runtime to run our software. So I'm going to add it to the path, install now, go to my prompt, Let install. It might take a little bit depending on your computer. Okay. Okay, pip. And again, this is 3.11 for me. It doesn't really matter too much. You can disable the path if you want to. I'm not going to right now. Okay. So again, I'm going to go back to the terminal. I'll do get your job installed. Again, JPK 20.0.2. If whatever is linked in my Git repo is different, that just means OpenJDK has been updated since then. And I will only update if I am sure it will run with the Nano Tetra Suite. If at any point the version stops updating on my git repo that means those new versions are going to have some issue with nano tetris so just keep that in mind now we'll do python this last version you'll see python 3.11.5 if you're using the microsoft store variant i think some people have to do pi my spice version so if python doesn't work then just pi by itself may work. If that doesn't work, I've seen rarely on Windows systems, you might have to do Python 3 minus minus version, which is going to throw an error for me because of how I install it. There's a bunch of different ways to install Python. I do it through the official website. I don't use the Microsoft Store version, anything like that. I just want to go ahead and use what the actual website does is because I think that's just the most straightforward way to go. If you're using something else, then just make sure it's going to run on your system fine. Now, last thing to actually install for me is going to be Visual Studio Code. If you want to use a different text editor, such as agreement, go for it. If you want to use Notepad Plus Plus or Vim, Emacs, um, let's see the other one thing, you know, Sublime, something like that, go for it. The only thing that I generally discourage is using default notepad and like a more full on text there, like Visual Studio Community, Qt Creator, um, anything like from the JetBrains software suite. Those can occasionally mess with some files in the Nantesh suite that they really should not be messing with, and it can cause your projects to go absolutely out of whack. So files that should not be messed with but the actual like user that's actually going through Nantetris development there are some files you just should not mess with and I have seen some students in the past using say Visual Studio Community 
and those got corrupted somehow and it was not something that was apparent that the student would have done it i have to assume it was the ide messing something up because it was just like replaced with a bunch of binary jargon instead of actual text but i digress i'm gonna install visual studio code now now one thing i'm gonna do is make sure to add open with code to the windows explorer file context menu those are these two options right here it makes life so much easier and i'll show you what i mean in just a second so i'm going to install that again this could take a little bit of time depending on your actual computer shouldn't be too long here and there we go so it's gonna i'm just gonna unclick launch visual studio code just ignore that for now what i want to do for the time being, I am going to move and touch windows to say my documents folder. Open that up. There's a few things in here from a different project. I'm going to make, well, yeah, I'll go ahead and make this folder. I'm just going to make a folder called Tom Board so I know where it is. So that zip here. And this is just put it somewhere you know it's going to be. Generally, don't leave in the downloads folder. That's that's going to get lost if you start downloading things. You have a bad time. Put it somewhere on your system that you'll remember where it is. That'd be the. I generally say that's not doing the desktop, but if that helps, do it there. Do it in your documents folder. That's what I generally do. But just as long as you know where it is, it should be fine. So extract these a little bit. Now this is the entire Nano Tetris suite. So see I'm in Comporg, Nano Tetris Windows, Nano Tetris. If you want to delete one of these, it doesn't matter too much. What I want to do now is see I have products and tools here. I want to right click in the window, show more options for Windows 11. I'm going to open with code. It's going to open this directory in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to exit out of these things, not a big deal. Make this a little bit larger and you'll see now i have the tools folder i have the projects folder open eight projects not a big deal all of these all are the custom ones i've made so it's not gonna be the same as the official nano tetris one so keep that in mind now for windows i have removed all the .sh files that you might see from the unix side you just have the .bats We'll show one of those running in just a bit. I'm not gonna go over any coding in this video. I'm gonna save that for an actual project guide. But right now, I want to go to extensions. And I want to look up and Tetris. And I specifically want to use this one from Lewis, if I'm not mistaken. Actually. Might be this one, is it this? Edwards. It's, uh, I've had success with this one. There's a few in here that you can use. You can play around with them if you want to. The one I've had the most success with has been this one. So I'm going to install that real quick. I'm going to choose Nano Tetris theme. And that is going to stylize the icons now. You can actually recognize the CMP files, HDL files, TST files separately. And then for assembly, same thing. You see the assembly files, comparison files, TST files, test files. No big deal. And again, the actual batch scripts are also now labeled a little bit better too. So, with all that being said, run a new terminal I do that a little bit and you can see I have my terminal open here now I typically do terminal based development for nano tetris I will show that in the coding video but I'm also going to show how the GUI actually works here the GUI is it leaves a bit to be desired especially regarding the actual size of the window. You cannot scale it, you cannot change it. So if it shows up poorly on your screen, you'll have to adjust the operating system scaling 
and again it just it leaves a good bit to be desired but you can do it all through some terminal scripts that i will show in a separate video for now we're just going to make sure everything is installed properly and go from there so again java Python's version just again to double check you can do it through here with my runtime There's my other runtime. I have my text editor VS Code up. But the reason I care about that is because I want to do dot slash my current directory tools. And then I want to open up this hardware simulator dot bat. So if you start typing inside the letter, you can just hit tab and auto complete it. That's why they just auto corrected there. And there we go. This. If you see this window, then you're ready to start. You're good to go. This is the actual NAND Detector Suite. This is their hardware simulator GUI. And I will show it actually running in a different video. So I'll show it go testing the files, programming the files, all in the GUI and in the terminal in the next video. Purpose of this video, just get all this stuff up and running. Move on. That's everything I want to install. So I think we're done here. And I hope this was a helpful video. I hope all the actual links are good. If anything ever goes wrong with those links, just make a comment on this video, make an issue on the actual Git repo, whatever you need to do to reach out to me, let me know and I'll keep things updated. So, I hope you learned something. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next video.